Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, Steve Sabadowski, BodyBuzz.com, and today we have Tyler Bridges. Uh, Tyler Bridges is uh, a reporter for The Advocate, and he's covering the legislative session, and his focus in, is on uh, tax issues. Um, Tyler, good morning. How are you doing today? Doing great, Steve. Terrific. Thank you. So, it was a very busy week uh, this past week up in Baton Rouge. Why don't you least give some ideas to what is happening and and what we can expect for uh, next week coming? Sure. The state is facing a 1.6 billion billion is in B budget deficit for the upcoming fiscal year that begins July 1st. That that budget deficit figure is if they were to spend as much money the state was to spend as much money this year as next year, they're $1.6 billion short. Why are they short? Because the legislature and the governor last year decided to put a bunch of one-time money, a billion dollars worth. One-time money means it's not available the next year. Uh, so it's kind of short-term fix. And uh, they did that because they didn't want to either cut spending or raise taxes last year. And that would have been this year's situation. So. How do you eliminate a $1.6 billion uh, shortfall? Well, again, you raise taxes or you cut spending. And the feeling of the legislators is that the most they can cut another amount of spending is maybe $600 million, maybe $700 million. The rest would have to made up, be made up with uh, new tax revenue. And that's what we saw the House grappling with this week. The House, because they are the first ones that take up uh, um, budget issues, uh, raising money, spending money before it would actually eventually go over to the Senate. And the action this week, um, uh, earlier in the week, was with the Ways and Means Committee, that, that's the tax committee, and they were dealing with a bunch of issues of whether to uh, pass these different uh, tax measures or not. They passed a bunch of them, and then and on Thursday the House voted on them. Now. I would call these tax increases. Uh, a lot of the legislators like to call them tax expenditures. It's that it's actually spending. These are not, of, of the various taxes that eventually were raised on Thursday. Only one is a direct uh, tax increase, and that would be on cigarettes. That's 32 cent per pack increase. The current rate is 60 is thir uh, 36 cents, so uh, a 32 cent more. And you get up to 68 cents, and that is what Mississippi's uh, current rate is. So that's the uh, so that's what the House did on ta on cigarettes. The rest of the measures that they passed would trim various tax credits. For example, if you got a uh, a dollar for a tax credit for buying something uh, or not paying something, uh, now you would get 80 cents. Uh, or, or maybe you get 75 cents on the dollar under these various tan plans. And again, the legislators like to say these are um, trimming tax expenditures, which is the same as spending. And so in, on Thursday, when the House was done with its work, they had passed 11 different measures that would raise, raise a total of about $664 million. Um, they were hoping to to get up eventually to 937 million dollars, so they're short 273 million dollars. And the House legis uh, House members and the leadership said, "Look, if we don't, if we if we're just going to cut spending, that means we're going to cut spending for LSU, Southern, UNO, all the other universities, uh, public colleges and universities in the state." or health care, and they said we just can't make those cuts um, uh, to health care or to the higher education system. They said we have to raise money. In fact, the figures show that in recent years, particularly businesses have been paying less and less in taxes. There's all sorts of new tax breaks that legislators and the governor have added to the tax code in recent years. So they said that's where we should go to raise this money. And so I said the ultimate result on Thursday was $664 million in new taxes. So uh, if we have a $1.6 billion uh, shortfall, 
and we have roughly, I think, uh, 940000 that we have uh, in terms of money that we need to raise. Is it fair to say that the difference is the amount we're going to cut? Yeah, there's various ways that you can cut spending by not giving pay raises, for example, or, you know, uh, or there's no inflation increase in pay. Uh, certainly, if I had a job, I'd want, you know, inflation goes up 2 or 3%, I'd want a a two or three percent bump in my salary, but with state workers, they could they could choose not to do that, and so they that would produce uh, certain savings. And if you you don't allow state workers to travel as much as before, uh, you know there's various way you know you look for other ways to save money to do things smarter. Uh, but ultimately, if they're the the the, the, the when they really make cuts uh, that are of any magnitude, that's going to fall upon. Again, LSU, Delgado, uh, UNO, uh, the various universities, and then the healthcare system. And a big issue for New Orleans, for example, is the opening of the new hospital. And they need the private company that's now managing it needs $88 million of extra money uh, to manage it. And there's even the possibility that they won't open it if they can't get this money from the state. So there's a group of particularly Republican legislators, 25 to 35 of them, that say, you know, I'm not going to vote for new taxes. That's, I just don't think that's the right idea. The government spends too much. The other side says, well, you can think that way, but that's going to mean cuts in, you know, the hospitals and the uh, universities. And so the House passed, again, $664 million of, tax, of taxes. And that now goes over to the Senate, and it'll go through a couple of different Senate committees, which can raise that amount. They can lower that amount. They can try to keep it the same. The guess is that they'll raise the amount, uh, and it eventually will go to the full Senate, and then ultimately it will go back to the House to see if the House agrees with whatever the changes the Senate has made. Um, now, you mentioned that the uh, that you know part of the reason why we're in this fix is because uh, we used one-time money uh, last year, and uh, you know wouldn't, wouldn't is it fair to say that we've been doing this for roughly you know ever ever since is I appreciate it ever since Governor General uh, took over, we've been using one-time money. Well, to be fair to Governor Jindal, one-time money was not invented by him. Uh, but it's certainly grown to the largest proportional use ever uh, last year by him and by the legislature. You know, there's an anti-tax crowd in there. So faced with a budget problem, and they were faced with one last year, they didn't want to raise taxes. By now, they have drained all the various reserve accounts of the state, so they couldn't do that anymore. So they used, again, money that was available just for one year last year, and that's not available uh, for this year, and again, part of that is by draining the last uh, reserves, it's like emptying your bank account and you got to pay the bills next month. Well, you don't have that, that bank account money anymore, and that's the situation the state is in this year. So this, con this conservative Republican legislature is doing something that is a, a bit of a surprise, which is to raise taxes. Most of the tax increases at this point, because there will be changes, are falling on business. Right, and uh, Steve Wagaspak and, and Lobby uh, are not too pleased. In fact, you asked a question to the governor uh, during a press conference about uh, Steve uh, Wagaspak's uh, comment about uh, after Thursday being perhaps the largest tax increase in Louisiana history. And uh, I don't think you got a direct uh, answer <laughs> uh, from, from the governor. Uh, so, but you had a, uh, an opportunity to talk to uh, Wagaspak or, or um, uh, any feeling in terms of what, what lobby is going to do? Yeah, well, the business community, uh, they're protecting their, their special interests. They are, you know, lobbyists, a special interest group. Uh, I, I find it sort of ironic, I should point out, that uh, they say they're for free enterprise, but they are not for ending the film tax credit, which is a uh, which is a total tax subsidy, nor they are trying to eliminate the solar tax credit, which again is a subsidy, whether you think it's good or not, they do interfere with the free enterprise model. But lobby is gonna, I'm sure, continuing lobbying legislators to not increase taxes. They say that's not good for business, not good for, uh, you know, to attract businesses to invest here, not good for the economic climate. 
the Republicans who are raising taxes along with Democrats are saying, well, wait a second, what happens if we don't have the proper roads or the bridges to get goods to market, get people around, traffic jams, or having a good economic climate also means not having layoffs of professors at LSU and UNO and Southern uh, and having uh, uh, courses dropped. Okay, so Waggis Pack is labeling what happened on Thursday as taxes. And the legislature is saying that everything is is not everything but the cigarette tax is not a tax. Is am I correct about that? Yeah, they're 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 calling it a uh, they, they're they're a trimming a tax expenditure. A tax expenditure is a is a, a real phrase. It's one that says that these are are actually spending through tax breaks and expenditure, and those tax expenditures in the state budget have grown enormously uh, in recent years under this governor and legislature. And so legislators are basically saying, hey, you know, we've gone too far, the pendulum went too far, and now we need to correct that. And uh, the business community is saying, no, don't, don't raise our tax, don't, don't trim these tax breaks or tax expenditures, whatever you call them. Now, I, again, listened to the uh, interview uh, the the press conference of the governor and uh, um, is that on nola.com yeah yeah actually yeah yeah and that was on Friday the press conference that was on Friday um, and basically as I appreciate what he was saying was that you know uh, we still have some time that this is a process you got to look at the big picture not at one particular uh, thing and that's all he said um, in, in general, in my, in my view. So I guess my question is, um, by, saying, by saying that you have to look at the big picture uh, and not just for a single part, um, do, you, do you think that he's made up his mind as to whether or not he would veto the entire budget if, in, if, if, if in fact, uh, let's say the Senate just approved what the House uh, voted on the, uh, the other day? Um, is, 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 yeah, is he, is, is he going to, yeah, go on. It's clear, uh, the governor has made it clear that if the, if the Senate simply approved what the House did on Thursday, that would be a tax increase, a net tax increase, and he, and if that was part of the final budget, he would veto that budget. We know that the Senate is going to amend the uh, right. House uh, uh, tax increases. The best guess is that the Senate, which is traditionally friendlier to higher taxes, is going to do that. The governor on Friday was very clear in saying, hey, uh, I'm not going to make a real judgment at this point. You know, again, it was interesting. My question to the governor was, you know, Stephen Wagesback, who was formerly your chief of staff, says this is the largest tax increase in the history of the state in a single day. And this anti-tax governor, uh, did not go along with Waggis Pack. Instead, he gave a much more nuanced answer, and he kept repeating that answer, right. which is that, hey, it's early in the process. Let's see what uh, let's see what they finally come up with. There's a lot of moving parts, and uh, so. It, but it, it, we know where we don't know where exactly what the governor's views are on the various taxes uh, raised right now, because there could be changes along the way. Uh, we do know in the end that if it represents a net tax increase in his mind following the guidelines established by Americans for tax reform, that he will veto that budget. But he has not identified which of those are actually uh, taxes. Uh, I, I think what he's uh, – correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what he's saying is that uh, uh, to roll back or to cut some of those, uh, say, uh, uh, credits, tax credits, film credits, etc. There's got to be some cut elsewhere. There's got to be right. in the. He keeps saying if okay. you can raise one tax, and that's okay as long as you decrease another tax. And but that doesn't not, raise any money, though. I mean, it, I don't. I don't understand that. Well, there are there are ways that the government can raise it. The governor's rules on taxes are confusing. They're confusing to legislators. They're confusing to me at times. But there are some taxes that some people would view as a tax increase, but according to Americans Tax Reform and the governor, it's not actually a tax increase. For example, the governor says if you eliminate tax 
rebates that businesses get, for example, for paying the inventory, the tax. The inventory tax is rather confusing because businesses pay it to local government for the for, to school boards and you know police juries and sheriffs. So, you know they get this money for their services in their parish. So businesses pay the money to local governments, and then they turn around and they get a tax credit. For those payments to local governments, they get that tax credit from the state. So if a business pays $1,000 to Jefferson Parish for the inventory tax, then they turn around and get $1,000 from the state of Louisiana as, as a tax credit. Now, what happens if that business uh, only owed $500 uh, in other taxes to the state? Well, then the state would, so that of that $1,000 they get back from the state, uh, five hundred dollars would actually be a they would actually get a check written to them, uh, and that other five hundred dollars would be a tax credit would offset their other taxes. But they would actually have a check written to them, a tax rebate, and in the governor's mind, that those rebates uh, actually are spending by the government. So if you eliminate those rebates. That is a spending reduction. Now, if you're a business and you're losing those tax credits, those tax rebates, to you, that's tax increase. To the governor and to Americans for Tax Reform, that's a spending decrease and is allowed. Okay, in Americans for Tax Reforms, that's uh, uh, Grover Norquist's uh, group. Um, now, what passed through the House was a, redu a uh, say, a reduction of that tax rebate of uh, 20%. So instead 25%. of getting twenty five percent, okay. So instead of getting the five hundred dollars back, it would be uh, seventy five. They would get seventy five percent of that five hundred dollars, uh, three hundred seventy five dollars, I believe it is, something like that. Um, so, uh, so where where we go from here? Uh, we go to this. Uh, uh, the, the tax bill goes to well, actually, it goes to appropriations in the House. Am I correct? And then the Senate picks it up. Well, the, the 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 Senate, the House on Monday, the Appropriations Committee is is hoping to pass its budget. It's, it's the first draft of the of the budget passed by the that will ultimately be passed by the legislature goes to the House Appropriations Committee. They want to pass that budget and they want to fold in the tax increases that the House passed on Thursday, and they also want to take the six hundred and sixty four million dollars raised. By the House on Thursday, plug that into the budget, and where you know where where are they going to plug that of the various holes? And the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, Jim Fannin, told me on Thursday after the votes in the House that their plan is to take that money and fully fund higher education. Fully fund higher education means that higher education would not suffer any cuts next year. That's been a great concern to King Alexander and Monty Sullivan and the other leaders of the. Uh, higher institutions, uh, higher education institutions. So Fan is saying, okay, we're gonna we're gonna make them whole. They're not gonna suffer any budget cuts next year. But in doing that, that leaves all the other holes. And the biggest hole then that that would still be unfilled would be for the healthcare system. And this is particularly again money for the new hospital in New Orleans that's opening up. The state money that would go for that, state money for rural hospitals, state money for the developmentally disabled, state money for uh, state nursing homes where elderly people live. There's a big shortfall now there. So before Thursday, both higher education and, and health care, those systems were, were facing big def deficits. So the House raised $664 million. The House leadership has made a political decision to direct all of that money to higher education, and then some of that money, there will be some money left over, and that will partially fund the whole that the health uh, that the healthcare system is facing. So now, healthcare is out on a limb by itself. Right, uh, and it maybe the limb is actually a little, <clears throat> pardon me, a little bit more brittle. <clears throat> Excuse me, because as I as I uh, recall. Uh, the the governor has um, had had in the privatization of those hospitals uh, use a a funding process that has not been approved by the federal government. So, although we may not have to pay that money back this year, we might have to pay that back, uh, and we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars in the following years under a new governor. 
Am I correct there? Yeah, you are correct there, but that's not an issue for what's for going year. on right now. That's that's an issue down for for the next governor and legislature. Right right now, the situation is is that that the the, the state lacks at least two hundred million dollars for the new hospital in New Orleans, which is opening for other hospitals that the management uh, has been privatized and there are, there are threats that they could say hey you're not giving us a giving us an, enough money state uh, we're just gonna cancel this contract to manage your hospital and that would cause chaos in the healthcare yes. system uh, that there wouldn't be enough money for you know the hospitals would have to cut back their service particularly for the poor children pregnant women uh, and uh, so right now the question is, will, that, will the legislature raise more money to uh, fund uh, the health care system and also uh, state museums and parks are facing cuts in hours and you know, may not be able to, some of them may not be able to open next year. So will, will the legislature raise additional money to pay for all that? And again, there's a, there's a group of, of, of you know, particularly Republicans and a small number of Democrats saying, hey, I'm not going to vote for any more tax increases, you know, especially not in an election year. Sure. Now, uh, I guess one of the last questions I have about this issue is, uh, you know, I, I'm hearing from different people who live in those Republican uh, districts, and, and that what they're saying is, look, let's cut. Cut, cut, cut. You know, we don't need to raise taxes. We ought to just cut. Um, is there any, I mean, is there any discussion about doing that? I mean, obviously, we, we are, we are going to cut. Uh, you described those cuts. But where yeah, else? Steve, if, yeah. if, if there was, if there were, uh, I, I, I certainly don't know 100% whether there are cuts to be made. I, I can say that we have a conservative governor and a conservative legislature and if they're not fine, and they are going to make some cuts, you know, maybe as much as seven hundred million dollars in cuts, maybe even more, uh, to deal with this one point six billion dollar budget deficit. But they are saying that this deficit is so big, they put the, they've dug themselves in such a big hole from, as I mentioned, particularly the use of one-time money, then the drop of oil prices has worsened the situation. That uh, that the only way to cut uh, uh, beyond about the seven hundred million starts. You know, cutting again. UNO, LSU, Southern, Delgado, and the other uh, higher ed education systems, and again the money for the uh, the hospitals and nursing homes, and and for poor children and uh, their mothers. What a sorry situation. 